newly committed features for 3.17.2 salvage vehicle munching and finally the crucible being added to the progress tracker and more coming right up Hello fellow citizens, this is phase one. If you're new to this channel, we do all kinds of Star Citizen content. So if you like content like this, make sure to leave a like and a sub, all right? Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my uh, Patreons and channel members for continuing to support this channel. Much appreciated, man. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so this week, the derelict and reclaiming point of interest card has been split into two. The first being the derelict reclaimer settlement points of interest and the other being the derelict reclaimer space missions. Okay, so I believe this is just itemization to better reflect the actual work being done internally. Okay, so in the release view, these features have been committed to 317.2. The additional Stanton uh, Lagrange points, derelict reclaimer settlement points of interest, derelict reclaimer uh, space missions, AI um planetary navigation illegal delivery missions and siege of orison okay so they made some updates to the pro progress tracker this week as well first being the salvage vehicle munching um implementing the ability to transform large chunks of metal salvage from ship into refinable material this will use a grinder system aboard the salvage ships like the vulture and reclaimer the deliverable has been added to the eu PU gameplay feature teams schedule. Um, this is exciting news. Uh, this is the first time of us hearing about the vehicle munching um, mechanic within the salvage career. Um, it's perfect timing as they're working on the, the uh, persistent entity streaming for 318. Um, we need Rex to persist for a prolonged period of time. Um, the, uh, for salvage to work, I feel like we need the ability to set beacons. Uh, this way we can always uh, backtrack and continue um, uh, salvaging as well. What I do hope is that they'll add more to this mechanic than the hull stripping and vehicle munching. I like to see them take some inspiration from the hard space shipbreaker game. Um, the idea of having to leave your ship to turn off or to detach uh, certain components um, in order to avoid catastrophic explosion sounds great to me, man. Um, I, I think it'll add more complexity to the mechanic itself. If they do this, I hope that they take time, effort, and profit into consideration as well. Okay, so up next is the freight elevators. Implementation of systems and content for players to um, physically load and unload cargo to and from their ships by conveying cargo to and from hangars, um, pads, garages, docking collars. Um, the deliverable has been added to the USPU gameplay features team's schedule. I'm interested in seeing how this mechanic will translate into the game. It definitely has more uh, adds to more things to do. And um, what I do hope is that they will adjust the return on investments for trading. The idea of managing your own cargo is great and to have the option for NPCs to move your cargo for you for a small price is also fantastic. Up next, they also mentioned that they're working on the new player experience. An initiative for improving the initial first 30 minutes of gameplay experience, which will help new players understand the context of the world and introduce them to star citizens basic features this includes updates on landing zones spaceports um, habs shops and more this deliverable has been added to the eu landing zone uh, team's schedule so now the new player experience has been neglected for a long time it's great that cig is finally addressing this issue um, especially now that the project is getting a lot of attention right now the last ie event brought in a lot of new players the great thing is that uh, in this game, the community is always welcoming and is always ready to help newer players. Up next is a player machine physical interaction. Initial implementation of animations that show the player interacting with ship controls and items it includes pushing buttons, flicking switches and interacting with other gears of the cockpit. Also other machines and items, including locker doors. 
This deliverable has been added to the active feature team's schedule. This feature will add to the immersion of the game. From the sounds of this, uh, whatever you use, whenever you use your inner thoughts, uh, your character will actually need to push the button itself in order for the action to be performed. For those that aren't sure what this looks like, you can check out the flight ready sequence of the Aegis Gladius. Up next is the Aegis Retaliator Base. Building, implementing, and balancing the base variant of the Aegis Multi Crew Combat, the Retaliator, as a game ready vehicle. The deliverable has been added to the vehicle content EU team's schedule. I was under the impression that the current Retaliator in game right now was the base variant. For those that are unaware, the Retaliator is a modular ship. So perhaps the current model right now is the torpedo boat variant. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Last but not least, they added the crucible to the progress tracker. Building, implementing, and balancing the anvil ship's uh, repair platform. The crucible as a game-ready vehicle. Uh, this deliverable has been added to the vehicle content EU team's schedule. The crucible coming online is very important for 4.0. The persistence between servers, players and orgs will actually be living in a verse. Having a repair ship within a fleet of an org is actually crucial for sustaining any operation. Also, they have removed the room depressurization um, from the progress tracker due to prioritization to the salvage work and will be rescheduled at a later date. Let me know which feature or vehicle you are looking forward to most in the comments below. And as always, leave a like and a sub. I will see you on the next one.